You are now listening to Radio City Podcast. Hello and welcome to Radio City Podcast. Radio City is a project run by Media Education and North Edinburgh Arts for young people between the ages of 14 and 21 years old. The course has developed skills in radio, sound design and music. Hello and welcome to Radio City's Conversations, young people talking about what they want to talk about. I'm Callum and this is Sean. <coughs> Thanks for that. You're welcome. I'm glad to know that you actually opened with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was uh, deb- debating that all day. Alright, so we've uh, made a list of well, kind of a messy list of what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a few movies we've seen for uh, so far during 2017. That's us halfway through the year already. Mm. Feels like only yesterday it was uh, Christmas time and we were all giving each other presents and don't, unwrapping them. Don't remind me. It's nearly Christmas time again, Sean. How do you feel about that? I want to kill myself. <laughs> Great, okay. Uh, so, movies we've seen this year, Sean. What do you think has been the best movie you've seen so far? Baby Driver. Baby Driver? Yeah. Wow. That's uh, Why is that? Um, Because, it, for me, it captures like the antithesis of why I love movies so much mm. on like a creative level and also just an entertainment level, like on both aspects. Because I really wouldn't mind, I would love to make like yeah, movies as a you know, career. Yeah. And as someone who loves watching movies and all that, it's something that I really get really passionate about. Mm. And whenever I see something like done right or done great, and Baby Driver is like a movie that's been done great, that I feel is one of those things. I want to. It's one of those movies. I think after we saw it the first time, I wanted to run. I wanted to run back in the screen and watch it again. Maybe yeah. just maybe just sell cam and just sort of stay there and yeah, just sort of like, take a little pillow with you. Yeah, a little sleeping bag. Be like, I'm here to see the movie again. Just get the tent. Someone coming like, what are you doing? I'm I'm camping. I'm watching Baby Driver again. Go away! You're interrupting the Baby Driver. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not surprised because you did absolutely love that movie. Yeah, and I I, lo- I loved it too. I uh, sat there next to you like the biggest grin on my face. Me too. It's by, one our, it's by one of our favourite directors, Edgar Wright, yes. who of course directed the Cornetto trilogy and uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Mm-hmm. And would have directed Ant-Man, but trouble with Marvel and stuff. Mm. Uh, my favourite movie of this year, can you guess what it is? Mm, okay, I'm going to get if I, Is it Baby Driver as well? No. What, really? No, it's a second. It's a close second. But oh. this other movie, I feel, was uh, it, it, it just... Was it Assassin's Creed? Was it because no, of Michael was, it was, crazy performance? It wasn't Assassin's Creed. No. That's, uh, that, that goes on a different list. Mm. Like, that's in a whole other world, you know? <laughs> it's like one of those movies that you watch and you're kind of like, this is... Like, it's so... I don't know. Sometimes it's good and... Oh, it's starting raining. I can hear the rain. It's even just the rain in here. Even the weather doesn't like Assassin's Creed. Oh, damn, it's a shame because it's uh, if you're a, I feel like if you're an Assassin's Creed fan, the movie's okay. But if you're not invested in the Assassin's Creed movies at all, mm. you just, just did I say Assassin's Creed movies there? Yeah. If you're not invested in the Assassin's Creed games at all, then you're not going to enjoy the movie. In fact, even people that like the games probably aren't going to enjoy the movie because the game is so separate. From the, uh-huh. ga- the movie is so separate from the games, rather not the other way around. I'm yeah. mucking up already. At least, at least the movie is at least the movie is like separate, so it doesn't have to worry about like anything that's in canon. So yeah, you know. so you don't have to worry about it being like, oh, is this part of the game universe? And I think that's sort of what I like about it. Uh-huh. At least like um, Fazbear and writers had the like a uh, smart idea to be like, oh no, hold on, don't get any of the other like aspects, and then just keep it as mm. its own thing. It's kind of the reason why I like the Silent Hill movie, the first one anyway. Yeah, yeah, and the first Resident Evil movie because uh, they're so separate from what the other games are mm-hmm. that you can sort of watch them and be like, oh, okay, this isn't the same story. Well, they're similar stories, but they're not set in the game. Anyway, um, so what was your film of the year? Uh, Colossus. Or Colossal. Colossal. Really? Yeah, Colossal so far is my uh, favourite movie mm-hmm. of 2017. Uh, simp- because maybe the same reasons uh, as... Baby Driver is yours, uh-huh. but what I like about Colossal is how it takes this little idea mm. that they really could have used to be cute and funny, but use it to just have a tragic sort of series of events play out, mm. you know? Like, uh, it does have its funny moments, and it is marketed as a sort of 
rom-com with giant monsters but it's not that at all <laughs> yeah I think the marketing was definitely one of the downfalls of it like, yeah. I think genuinely I felt I, I, don't get me wrong I found the film disappointing but not to a level degree where I didn't really hate it I liked it I am planning on probably watching it again because I feel like I'm a bit sorry toward it but I think as I think by the way it was marketed and because I was prob because like Candy did some elements of the film I wasn't really particularly a fan of I was sort of like oh okay I mean don't get me wrong I like it and I think the concept was executed good enough mm-hmm. but I don't think I don't think there, but there's a lot of like elements of it that sort of don't make me love it there was a there was a point halfway through the movie where I could tell you were just going to be like ah uh, this is okay mm-hmm. it's not great uh-huh. and like it was at that because I looked over at you and you just sort of you had this sort of like sort of like I don't know why I'm doing it because nobody can see but like uh-huh. you had this sort of look on your face like what's why? Um, um, what scene was that again? Like uh, I can't remember the exact scene, but like I looked over, like there were a few times I looked over, and you were kind of like you looked like you were enjoying it, but mm-hmm. there was like it got there was a point and got to a point in the movie where I looked over at you, and you were kind of just like. Mm. Did it involve Jason Sudeikis somehow? Because I think I remember there was. It was some... a Jason Sudeikis scene. I I think it was probably like uh, how when the gradual reveal of his character, I kind of got every, I kind of got annoyed by that when you first sort of. Why? Yeah. Well, not going to go wrong, when you first meet Jason, it's like, yeah, he's cool. It's men like him, he suddenly switches um, into, like, an asshole, and it's like... But, I mean, people do that. People can suddenly switch their attitude on a die. Like, like someone can be all, oh, hi, I'm, I'm a nice guy, how are you doing? And then they can sort of go, I, I hate you, you're a, you're a job, B. Where and did, then... Where did Jason Sudeikis become only place? I don't know. <laughs> he did say he's become only, 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 only... only, only, only. I forgot his name. Ever boy, ever boy. Um, but no, yeah, he. Um, I, I, that's actually an aspect I like. How he starts off, kind of, like a Jason Sudeikis character, like mm-hmm. a ball, and uh, you enjoy him when he's on screen. But then he sort of like changes, and mm-hmm. it's really, really like whoa. Yeah, don't but it's not like I don't think it's out of the blue. I think it's quite mm-hmm. believable that somebody in his situation could be that kind of guy. Oh, don't worry, I like the gradualness of it. You know, the, it's the gradual... The gradualness? Is that a word? That's not a word. <laughs> well, I like how it was... I like how it was gradual, how it was more of a build-up toward it rather than, like, you know, I think it was sudden, it's like, okay, well, hold on. Yeah, if it, if it was something, like, he, mm-hmm. he just decided, I'm an asshole now, yeah. then it would be kind of like, oh, well... I think his transition for me was like the game operation. Like when you first see him, there's like when like we like you know you have that big board, you have like the bones in there and all that. Yeah. yeah. Like you have. Like the I want to see where this analogy goes. Like you have like the, the like um the, the board there and like um, when you first meet you, it's like okay, this is gonna be a good game. I can't wait. And then you try to get the one board immediately, and then all of a sudden you hear the buzzer go off, and that's like the point where it was like kind of suddenly like oh, Jesus, okay, all right. And then as you start getting good at the game, it gets getting gradual. And you start getting better at it. I kind of feel it's what is gradual is a. Uh, you know, his uh, development was like for me. Yeah, well, I'm actually quite surprised that actually kind of works <laughs> as an analogy. I didn't expect it to actually work that well. Yeah, my analogy feels they mostly end on like stuff like... Eh, bleh, 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 bleh. It's like this because of this. Yeah, I just do it because I want to sound smart. Mm. You do a lot of analogies. It's like ev- at the end of every movie, you've got a different analogy for what the movie's like. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Sean, all these analogies, stop. You're like a professional critic. Wow. I like to think I'm one, but not really. All right, so that was... Those are our best movies, John, like Baby Driver. Uh, what score would you give Baby Driver out of six? A uh, five out of five. Oh, oh sorry, six. Out, out of six. six. We're doing it out of six. That's uh, Six out of six. Do you want to do it out of five to make it easier? I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> um, but I do mine out of six. So. Yeah, I do mine out of five because I'm kind of old school, I guess. All right. Um, by fate. Oh, yeah, five out of five for Baby Driver. Okay. Uh, Colossal's a six out of six, obviously. <laughs> like, if you can kick La La Land's ass and become my favourite film of the year so far, then yeah, you that's did a good a, job. It's still a really good movie. Oh, yeah, I love La La Land. Like, it's yeah. my second favourite film of the year. It's just... But after watching it again, because we, like, we bought it and I went back and watched it again a few times, and uh, I have a, I've got a couple of problems. Hmm. There's, like, there's some times when they're singing when you can tell that's not really them singing. Oh, so it's more like the technical aspect of the musical Yeah, it's more, of, it's more of a technical aspect sort of deal. Uh, it doesn't ruin the movie at all. Yeah, I remember like reading there's some strange controversies around the film. I remember like reading that some people hate it because like, come um, and I find, don't get me wrong, I find some of them believable, but at the same time kind of bizarre. Some people hate it because like um, Ryan Gosling's like main character was um, 
well, obnoxious. I mean, I can't really blame him for that because he's uh, kind of. Uh, I do find him a bit obnoxious, but I also think that's why the why I like the movie. How they oh. can take this really obnoxious jerk of a character and still make him likable. Yeah. I liked him mostly because he was insane enough to sort of like go for his dreams. I'm like, yeah, you do that, obnoxious jerk. I My favourite part of the movie is the ending. Yeah, segment. that ending is awesome. When they go into the... I better not say because I don't want to yeah. spoil it for oh. anyone who hasn't seen it, but you know what I'm talking oh, about, yeah, right? Oh yeah, the ending is beautiful. Through, yeah, it's a it's wonderful ending. a beautiful ending. Uh, it reminded me a lot of... Well, not Singing in the Rain, but the, well, the whole movie, mm -hmm. the whole movie reminded me of Singing in the Rain, and it reminded me of it so much that I actually went out and bought that Blu-ray, watched that, and it's it's way better than La La Land, by the way. Mm. If you want a movie musical that's better than La La Land, Singing in the Rain. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, there's just little bits of La La Land that I'll watch, and I can I, I was talking to you about the opening part. Mm -hmm. uh, like... They, they, everyone dancing and all the singing and that, but I, I could not hear a word they were saying. Yeah, I love the, op I love the opening. I think I remember like well, I, after watching the movie on Blu-ray, I looked at the special features and just the amount of effort he went that went into like making that scene is just yeah, incredible. it's definitely a really good scene and a strong opening, but I could not hear a word they were singing. And after that opening, the movie kind of goes mm, and sort of like grinds to a halt, mm -hmm. and it kind of goes at a slow pace until the next musical number picks up and it kind of goes like that for most of the movie which again doesn't ruin the movie but it's a little nagging problem for me I don't think this is just because I'm not like a huge musical fan but I think uh, for me it satisfied me a lot well, I think it's sort of at a really good pace but that's just because I don't really, I don't really like watch a lot of musicals you like musicals you don't culture swing like musicals just Lean as a Rap was one of them but not a lot of people that's like it that's a bad it. musical not a lot of people like it yeah it's terrible <laughs> Just I don't care how... I mean, Anne Hathaway's bit was the only great bit, I think. Yeah. The rest of it is just awful. Well, there, then again, there's, it's based on a stage musical, so, you know... I, mean, I think stage musicals are great, and Les Miserables is probably great. I've not seen it on stage, but yeah. the movie is terrible. I like the movie. I mean, I acknowledge that it's terrible. Like, if there's one aspect of it that I hate, which is bizarre, I, I don't like Sash Baron Cohen in it. Funnily enough, that's the one bit I cannot think as well. <laughs> on top of the Anne Hathaway bit... I like that one as well. Like, it irritated me because, like, <laughs> everyone else is giving off this really, like, lovely, like, um, English accent because, you know, it's based on a musical that, like, some English people decide to make based on the novel by Victor Hugo. Mm. And then you got, like, uh, it's like... Really, if you think about it, they all should have French accents because yeah, it's set in France. It's kind of one of the reasons why I don't like the Danish girl. You know the Eddie Redmayne movie who becomes a... I've never seen that, so I don't know. Oh, it's a biopic of a guy in Denmark. I know, I know what it's about, I just oh. haven't seen it. It's set in Denmark, and they all have English accents. Yeah, I mean, it'd be weird to hire actors to try and impersonate. I mean, it, do you have people actually... Ha do people actually have a Denmark accent in the movie? No. Right, That I think that's fine. If people... <laughs> if you're going to set a movie in, say, Germany, mm. I think if everybody has an English accent then I'm fine. But if you've got the main characters with English accents, 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 and then suddenly have people with German accents, mm. then you've got a problem. Because uh -huh. then it's like, what, where are we now? Yeah, I don't mind. I, I can understand the fact why it's English act, why they have English accents. Maybe they make it more easier and more somewhat marketable, but I mm. just found it irritating, especially when we were like, okay, this is set in Denmark. So you think... I mean, I don't think they should be putting on accents. If they're going to say in Denmark, then they should speak the language oh, and yeah. make a subtitled movie. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I think. Uh, don't know how you feel. I think they could probably do it either way, but if you're going to have a speaking langu uh, English language, at least make it some effort to get some accents in there. Yeah. But, and, I think, and I think you are right about that scene in Les Miserables with uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. How everybody up to now has had an English accent, mm -hmm. and then suddenly a French accent. It's very jarring, so you're like, what universe is this? <laughs> what kind of weird realm have we entered here? Where France has got English speakers and French speakers. Is this what happened when like, England defeated France in like, a, 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 like one of those big battles or something? I mean, yeah. like some sort of weird dimensional... Like... I mean, we can't act like... It's a huge problem. Mm. Like, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a problem for me, and it even bothers me when I'm watching like Beauty and the Beast. Like, why does everybody have to speak English... Except for the candle. Why is the candle got a, It's the only one with a French accent. I think it's because he looks French. Probably. Right. <laughs> he drew him French and just uh, went, nah, he'll be the only one with a French accent. He looks it. I don't, I don't think that's a good excuse. 
Like, I either have everybody have a French accent, or only, or have everybody have with an English accent. Why is it only the candle that gets a French accent? Uh, that's just my theory. I mean, I don't even know why. I don't know why. And they had a chance to change that in the Beauty and the Beast remake, but no, they don't. They still got a kind of a French sort of twang. Yeah. Not even a good one. He got a Scotsman doing a French accent, and it's not that great. There are some bits in Be My Guest where I can hear a Scottish. Uh, I think it sounds more a bit more Mexican on some parts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Uh, what I was going to ask before we went into that uh-huh. was, uh, what's been your worst movie of 2017? Oh. Here we go. Um, Sandy Wexler, the new Adam Sandler movie. No, not seen it. Yeah. I don't watch Adam Sandler movies now. Yeah, it's on Netflix. You know, part of that very weird Netflix Adam Sandler deal. Um, it was like set in like LA, like a period drama. It was like a period movie set in like the nineties in LA. And, oh, is this about the actor? Um, not the actor. It's about like um, it's about uh, this guy who's like a talent aid scout. Who another one you're on about? Because I saw it advertised and I thought that looks terrible. Yeah, and guess what? It is terrible. In oh, fact, what it's a shocker! In, it's insultingly terrible. Well. Like there, like there was, there was a like I got mad halfway, th- I got mad halfway through it. Like in fact, no, I was already angry. My blood was boiling at this point. I'm being genuine. The movie actually wow. got me so mad. Like there's a scene, and I'm going to explain this to you, and I hope you don't laugh because I'm gonna be like, oh, this is over. God damn it. Um. Okay. The scene in question. Right, I feel like you're going to raise your voice, so maybe move back away from that's the camera. Get, get ready. A, that's a good idea. Um, so. I'll try to be calm as possible. I said camera again. Back away from the microphone. Right. I'll be as calm as possible, but the scene in question is that I think like um, there was a Kevin Trollocus character played by um, Kevin, oh, I'm fat and clumsy James, who... Um, That's his full name, by the way, Kevin, <laughs> oh, 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 I'm fat and clumsy James. It's on his birth certificate. It's on his birth certificate. His middle name comes from his great-great-grandfather, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, I'm fat and stupid James. Um, anyways. He's, he, he was my favourite actor when I was... But a non-existent. When you were just a pebble. When I was when I was a thought. Mm-hmm. Um. So this character. So yeah. So I think him. His character is like struggling to get work, and Sandy's like, "I'll get you some work." So what ends up happening is. Does Adam Sandler have a middle name as well? Um. Adam. I don't know. I. I don't Adam. I was a huge successful comedian, but now I'm the most unfunny rich guy in the business. Um, Sandler. I don't like being too hard on him because I have heard. I'm not. I'm not as good at yeah. the names as you are. Yeah, I'm not really too. I don't want to be too hard on Adam Sandler though because I have heard he's a really good that guy. And the, not only that, but the movies that he has made are gen- can be good. Like Happy Gilmore is the best one he's made. Mm. Like. Anyways. I disagree. You clearly have not seen uh, Little Nicky. I've seen the, <laughs> I've seen Little Nicky. What are you talking about? It's got no. Quentin Tarantino as a blind priest. I laugh my ass off every time I watch that scene. Little Nicky's a terrible movie, but I love it. <laughs> Sorry, continue. That's okay. And so, and by coincidence, there is this um, clown actor or something. By coincidence, he, he's never been introduced. This is like the first time you see him. Who's he played by? I don't know. You don't see his face. <laughs> okay. But like, um, it like you'd never see him. Like he just he goes, oh, I'm, con- I'm a clown. <laughs> no, no. And he takes off the wig. It turns out it's Adam Sandler in real life. <laughs> That's the end of the film. Yeah. Um, what ends up happening is that oh no, it gets like worse and it got me like really mad. What ends up happening is that like him, um, he like starts right. He has like a scotch next to him and starts writing it a suicide note. What the clown? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> out of context, it sounds funny, but in context and like this comes out of nowhere and it's like blatant. And for me, it was blatantly unfunny. And he's, he's writes down this like suicide note. And then he like um, gets oh, the news prepared and suddenly kills himself. And then like um, <laughs> yeah, it's followed by like other. Um, uh, uh, little dummies like he's another ventriloquist talent oh my god I, yeah I wasn't even laughing I sat there jaw on the floor like wow this is like <laughs> the most insulting thing I've seen it makes 13 reasons why look eligible to play the high school so right so let me get this straight this clown comes out of nowhere mm-hmm. no context yes writes a suicide note mm-hmm. and he just kills himself yeah and that's the end that's of it. That. That's, that's, that's the joke that's the whole joke what's the punchline I don't know that the clown is sad. <laughs> I think that's what it is, but that's, that's not. Good. It irritates me because, like, I because like has someone. <laughs> Actually, I'm not gonna lie. That's <laughs> I'm gonna lie. I would con. Every context, it's funny, but in context, <laughs> for me, like, nah, dude, in context, it would probably still is funny. Yeah, it irritates me because, like, um, I don't know. I don't really get too personal here, but I have some. I know some people who are like, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. Oh no, like every context, it's funny, but in context, I'm like, that's just insulting. That is like horrible. It is. It's real. It's really. Um, it is kind of out of bad taste, mm. you know. But my opinion on comedy is, if there's a joke to be made about it, make it. No, don't get me wrong. I'm like uh, off. But if 
like there's a time and a place, you know. Don't make a joke in an inappropriate time. Oh. Uh-huh. With an inappropriate subject matter. Hmm. Let some time pass and then make all the jokes you want. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm okay with like um, like out of taste jokes. I enjoy, I try to do a couple ones in a while because like like the shock value in it. But well, I like I think they're funny. Yeah, they can be funny what, if they're done right. Yeah, what irritates me is how there was no punchline to this joke. It just happens out of nowhere, and you think just because of the clown killing himself with what's, dummies. What's, what's, the, what's the rating of this movie? It's twelve A eh? or fifteen. I think it's fifteen. Who plays the clown? Oh no, you, you, you don't, don't know. You it's don't just know. like the yeah. camera's like on his hands and his body most of the time, and then it got worse. Oh, so you never see the clown's face? No. You know what? It's sounding kind of funny. Yeah. You're kind of selling me on this scene. <laughs> Damn it. Um, I, I don't want to see this movie. Yeah, it, it, personally, it was for, personally for me, it irritated me. Yeah, I can it. see how it would offend you and mm. other people. And yeah. I can see why people wouldn't find that funny. But yeah. to be perfectly honest, I think it sounds pretty funny. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe maybe, during, maybe in the movie. Uh-huh. It's, so basically, the, what's the movie called again? Sandy Bexer. Don't watch it. Would you say, would you recommend it to anybody? No. Adam Sandler fans? If I don't want to insult them, but if that's your brain dead shtick, then yeah. You never know. People that listen to this might be fans of Adam Sandler. I'm sorry. Yours I... truly is a bit of a fan. I like uh, paper, not not paper boy, water boy. <laughs> well, imagine the paper boy uh, with like Adam <laughs> Sandler in there. But Zach, it's him. Zach Efron is Adam Sandler. <laughs> He comes in and goes, I want the papers. Adam Sandler and, Matthew, and Matt McConaughey are brothers in 1960s Florida selling newspapers. Matthew McConaughey is like, no, get out of here. Mm, like a but, man. Uh, yeah, Lil Nicky, The Click, mm. uh, Pappy Gilmore, like yeah, he yeah. said. Uh, I, I have a soft spot for that, the 50, 51st Dates. Yeah, that was, I don't think I've seen it. Is it any good? I like it. Yeah. I think it's fine. That one with Jennifer Aniston, I kind of like as well. Um, it's not a good movie, but I like it. Just go with it. Yes, yeah, the one's yeah, got yeah. the Cole Kim in there. I don't know why she's in there. Maybe she needed the money. Um, for the same reason she was in uh, uh, Paddington. She's great. <laughs> no, I think she was in Paddington. But I you're... think the worst Adam Sandler movie I've seen is Pixels, and that's not because it's an Adam Sandler movie. That's because it's a really cool idea, but they gave it to these bozos. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like... Uh, I like your term there. Bozos. It's kind of like getting the Mona Lisa, a colour in Mona Lisa, and giving it to a toddler. He's not going to colour it in properly. He's going to take a big splodge of paint and make a mess. Yeah. Then they're going to... He's going to go... Ooh, pain. And then like, just... All over it. That was... In case you're wondering, that was him sneezing and vomiting at the same time. All over the paint. <laughs> That's a... So now you've got baby snot and vomit. The <laughs> That's what Pixels is. Pixels is uh, baby snot and... Puke. Hung in the fridge for everyone else to see and be disgusted at. For everyone in Hollywood to look over and go, lovely. And for the fridge, that's how it bombed. Hollywood just, put, just put, pretty much was like, oh, this is good, I'll put it on the fridge. I and think the, Pixels did make a lot of money though. I think it made some and then like, suddenly it just bombed. I think from what I remember, apparently it just bombed. I, I remember it had a, I remember because I was quite angry about it, that it had a pretty good opening. Because mm-hmm. I went to see it and I thought it was bad. And then everybody else went to see it and it got lots of money. Mm. And then, like you said, it suddenly didn't. Yeah. I think it had like maybe a Batman v Superman situation where like, suddenly it was like riding this wave of momentum, and then suddenly it just stopped. And then like, wait, hold on, what? And then like, I'd, ra- I'd rather, to be honest, actually, I'd rather watch Pixels than Batman v Superman mm. because Batman v Superman's boring. Yeah, didn't you like go see it like at the midnight showing? I did. I went to see it at the midnight showing. Me and Daniel went to see it. Oh my god, that was not fun. Got home at three o'clock in the morning. And I wasn't happy. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done a midnight screen. I think it's because I'm really self-conscious about that sort of thing, I guess. It was busy. There mm. was lots more people there than I thought there would be. And there was people checking bags. Because Ooh. the last Batman movie, uh, somebody walked in with a gun. Yeah, but Dark Knight Rises. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So people people were checking bags and stuff, which, fair enough. Oh. Uh, I was nervous because I thought they were going to look in my bag and go, You've got food! Get out of this cinema! <laughs> I thought somebody was going to be there with a gun. I thought somebody was going to be like, this movie's not going, I'm bored. <laughs> oh, my uh, my worst movie of 2017. Yeah, what is it? Uh, I wouldn't call it worst movie because it's not a bad movie. But it's not good either. Uh, actually, no, I'll leave that movie alone. Worst movie. What was it? Go on. I'm curious. I was going to say Wonder Woman, but then I remembered there was another movie I saw. Yeah. Uh, well, come on, Wonder Woman, man. I mean... Nah, I don't know. I was going to get... The worst movie I've seen this year is uh, Surf's Up 2, Wave of Mania. 
But I was going to give that a pass because it was a kids' movie. And then I thought, nah, you know what? It, nah, keep it in there, dude. Like, th- but then I thought, you know what? If it came down to it, I'd rather watch Wonder Woman than Surf's Up 2. Yeah, at least Wonder Woman's got, you know, Gal Gadot. Yeah, but Surf's Up 2 has... Uh, Undertaker uh, telling... Put that on the poster. <laughs> Surf's Up 2 has got the... the Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, though, like, um, yes, I watched it. It's awful. It is bad. And I, I thought you'd actually kind of like it because of the wrestling aspect. Yeah. Oh, I just because it has wrestling doesn't mean I'm not going to enjoy it. I mean, here's a little secret about Sean. He loves wrestling. I like it. Yes, I admit. <laughs> he says he likes it, but he, he purchases the game every year. He watches all the pay per view events, and he just done a salute there to I, God knows who. To all the wrestling fans who get like, there you go, wrestling fans. Sean salutes you. Anyway, back to it. Surf's up to mm. it's, it's a bad movie, but you know what? It's not the yeah. worst movie I've ever seen. I think the only positive I have for it is that Undertaker at least make me no, made no, me no, laugh no, watching no, it. No, 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 like man, he made me laugh the most. <laughs> it was because the, was the it was the fish and the coconut. Milk. <laughs> Look at the fish. Always was some way to milk a fish. Just put a straw in. Come on, the fish. <laughs> It's so it's so weird and out of nowhere you're sitting there and you're like, ah, oh, this movie's bad and then he's suddenly like milk a fish. And then they put up this visual of this otter sticking a straw up the fish's bum and then just it's like oh, this is for kids. Has no. a, you know what, has a you know what, has a wrestling fan. That, that's not even bizarre to me. The guy, How is that not bizarre? What? He's a he's much weirder in like you know the actual wrestling shows. Don't like, tell me he actually does it in the ring. He actually gets up in the ring and goes, "This is how you make a fish." The one time he re- the one time he wrestles God, which, which he wrestles God, which was <laughs> depicted as a spotlight. <laughs> no, this is no. Dude, Vince McMahon is mad, but Sean, you love wrestling. <laughs> yes, but oh I can acknowledge God. I can acknowledge that it's really stupid. Good, I'm glad you can. I remember when you took it really, really seriously. Back yeah. When you were- 12. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> I can acknowledge that's stupid. I mean, come on, a guy fighting God to pretend as a spotlight? I preferred when God was depicted as that weird thing in South Park. <laughs> or as like a big white bearded guy from The Simpsons. Mm. With five uh, fingers. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Right, um, so uh, Surf's Up 2. I can't really think right now of why. Uh, it's bad. I mean, just listen to the title. Surf's Up 2, Wave Mania. Still not convinced that it's bad. Here's the pitch. It surfs up with wrestlers. That actually sounds decent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what the Wave Mania was. I kind of thought there was going to be like a big major event. There was yeah, like, there was no event. Yeah, at least the Scooby-Doo like, um, wrestling movies had an event. This had like... And Scooby-Doo. Yeah. <laughs> this has Chicken Joe. Everyone's favourite. He, he even like to destroy Chicken Joe, dude. I like Chicken Joe and oh. Joe in the first one. I like Chicken Joe as well, <laughs> but I prefer Chicken Joe. That's yeah, that's just me. He's in the spinoff. Um, uh, Beats. Surf, no, he's in the he's in the uh, Surf Down, where instead of everyone being fantastic, they're all terrible. And the one fantastic guy is hailed as the king, and it turns into a sort of cult situation, a cult of surf and penguins. Humans find them. And every time a human comes over, they devour it. This sounds like we're making like a weird like Planet of the Penguins sort of movie. Mm, sounds good. I'd we'll, watch that. We'll get Andy Circus <laughs> to play the pink, the main penguin. He'd come out and he'd be like, uh, "Penguin, no kill penguin." <laughs> he would even like do the problem. And then one of them comes out tap dancing and he goes, "Get that damn little penguin out of here!" And, he probably... like, and like one of the penguins go, "Hey man, that's offensive. You stop that right now." I okay, yeah. Um, happy feet, but um, apes. I uh, guess. Yeah. They, that's what that's what Planet of the Apes did a tap dancing ape tap dancing baby ape of a terrible of a... that would stop all the wars it would go from War of the Planet of the Apes to Planet of the Apes has talent Heck. <laughs> <laughs> who'd be behind it like Simon Cowell no it'd be that little koala from uh, Sing <laughs> except instead of a koala he's like a big ginger ape and he goes we do talent show so Maurice just Maurice taking over yeah it's Maurice thing. he comes in he goes we do talent show and we make apes who do dance <laughs> and that's probably offensive to somebody apes probably <laughs> this is what's going to happen this is how the, I'm this, really worried that we're going to offend someone <laughs> this is how the planet of the apes is going to happen <laughs> apes will become offended and then they're going to take over the world they'll listen to this and they'll be like this is stupid let's go take over the planet they're going to do sign language first oh, apes yeah. are quick uh, I don't know how to I'm offended <laughs> I studied BSL for a long ass time and you make fun of that? How dare you, man? Oh, I'm sorry, dude. 
Anyway, uh, we've talked about best movies, or worst movies. How about we do something that uh, not many people do, our most middle ground movie. A movie that wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. Hmm, okay. Sean's just picked up his phone, look at his list. Yeah, because I didn't... I don't, I don't need to do that, however, because I have a fantastic memory. Let me just go through my brain. Don't make fun of me! <laughs> Let me just go through my brain to see what movie I thought was really middle of the road. And I'm done. <laughs> You were looking on your phone, you no, liar. That's my, I was looking at my brain files. I think for me, the movie where I got, where I'm mostly down the middle, is probably um, Jackie. Jackie? Yeah. Oh, with Natalie Portman. Yeah, she was really good. She's like the best thing in the whole film. When is Natalie Portman not really good? Star Wars. Pequels. Besides, she was actually still pretty good in that though. No, she was pretty... It's just the dialogue she had to read. Yeah, I guess so. What was, what was that one... <laughs> I only remember, all I just remember is like... I'm a chancellor. <laughs> Anakin, you're breaking my heart. Anakin, you're breaking my heart. The only like, line of dialogue I remember, but no, the only two, I don't, there's a bunch of lines of dialogue. Are you an angel? There's a bunch of lines of dialogue I remember. Most of them, that's supposed to be because now half of them are used for memes. Yeah. There's General Kenobi. Which is General like, Kenobi. Oh, no, 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 there's General Gravis and his like, weird dialogue. No, no, General Kenobi is much better. <laughs> General Kenobi. Yeah. Ah, um, yes, what is it? Yeah, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, you have Obi-Wan who had this uh, hello there thing that was... Hello there. I'm Obi-Wan. You do not want to sniff the pixie sticks. It was a... Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't want to sniff the pixie sticks. What's, what's that? He came in with the sticks. Yeah, you what is it? some sticks? You, you will not sell me sticks. I don't want to sell you sticks. No, you know, no, they had a name. What was the stuff he wanted to sell? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, there was there was actually a video out there that a friend sent me, which is like the uh, lightsaber fight from the Phantom Menace, but like instead of the classic sounds, it's just Obi Wan's hello there. <laughs> hello there. Hello, 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 hello there. Hello there. Hello, there. hello, hello there. <laughs> It's brilliant. And the other one being, I don't like sand. <laughs> I don't like sand. It's actually, too rough. Actually, before we continue, just a quick thing. I think recently they had a big Star Wars convention. You know the JB tra- you know when the um, trailer for the Last Jedi debuted. Uh huh. They had a fan convention where Hayden Christensen actually came out. It's like one of the rare runs that he attends. Oh. Yeah, and the the best thing ever happened. He said the line. No, no, no. Oh. Someone gave him a, jan- a jar of sand. Oh wow. Yes. Yeah, somebody oh, wow. gave him a jar of sand. I feel bad for that guy because he's not a bad actor. I think he took it in straight actually. I think he found it quite funny. Yeah, I know. He's not a bad actor, but people, because of that one movie, people are going to associate him with being a bad actor. Oh no, I think the guy can be good at just like, again, it will probably do to Lucas's like I mean, script writing. Oh no, was that him in Finding Nemo as the shark? Oh um, no, I was, I was, there was Eric was, Bana. I get him mixed up with Eric Bana all the time. It was Eric Bana who was the shark. And I get him mixed up with the Hulk all the time. Mm. You know? I mean, they're both bad movies, right? They're both yeah. bad... No, they're not bad actors. They're both good actors. Eric Bond is good, just... I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think about it, because we've talked... Oh, my middle of the ground. Uh, I don't, I won't waste any time. Wonder Woman. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that second act is so... Like, it's fantastic. If the whole movie was that, then it would have been... Per- it would have been brilliant. But unfortunately, at the slow beginning first act... And then the really stupid, really DC third act. Yeah. I'll do it wrong. I liked it. Like I, like, I would happily like get it on Blu-ray. I don't think I had like a more middle ground thing of it. For I me. don't even want to buy it on Blu-ray anymore. I know I said I would, but I don't mm. know. Yeah, for me it was Jackie mainly because like, I think that was like the perfect middle movie. If that makes sense. Like there's a there, yeah. I, I, I know you've explained why. Uh, it has the right amount of cons and pros. All right. No, no, you didn't. Did you explain why? I just said that Portman was great. Um, oh, right. It okay. has, I say why yeah, I'll be quick. It has the right amount of um, pros and cons. There's things about it that I like and there's things about it that I don't like. Plus, it's just something that's like I don't think I'd watch again because it's kind of depressing. Okay. So that's your personal uh, middle of the road movie? Yes. My personal middle of the road movie was uh, Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. We forgot to say the scores, but I don't think that matters anymore. Nobody really goes by scores anymore. There's a few things we want to talk about, but we don't have much time. They'll be quick. Yeah, let's just uh, Crash Bandicoot in the same trilogy. It's good! I haven't finished it though. It's fantastic. I've finished uh, it com- it's the Crash Bandicoot video game that comes with uh, Crash 1, 2 and 3. Uh, all fully remastered in high definition with fully remastered soundtrack and sound effects and I am loving it. I like it a lot. I love it too. Crash Bandicoot was one of the first games I ever played. And when I first heard that they've made remake, that was it. I was excited. I didn't even care that they put them in Skylanders. That usually would have angered me, 
But mm-hmm. when they said, we're making a Crash Bandicoot remake, I was like, you know what, do whatever you want. Yeah. I heard there was something regarding Cla- Crash, and I think I saw that, and I was like, oh, the Skylanders, I'm like, oh, for God's sake. And then, like, uh, after that, when they announced there was that hap, they had the um, remakes happening, pretty much I flipped over the table and demanded, and, and just make sure that I had plenty of money in the bank. He threw the money at the screen and said, give me the game. Uh, uh, so that was a fun little story, fun yeah, little tidbit. It was good. What was, I think you mentioned you wanted to tell me something about a game that you finished. Yeah, I played uh, What Remains of Ethan Finch. Have you heard of it? No, it sounds cool. It's a little... Ind- I've got to stop fiddling with that. <laughs> it's a little independent game. That could mean anything. Sean! <laughs> I'm sorry. My God. <laughs> I was fiddling with the wire of the mics, folks. Sorry. Jesus. Right. Where was I? Right. What, Ethan what, Finch. What Remains of Ethan Finch. Oh, no. Is it? It's either Ethan or Edie. It's Ethan. It's Ethan. It's either Ethan or Edie. Anyway. Uh, and it's pretty much just about this girl that goes... That, sorry. That goes back to her old family house. But all the rooms are sealed. And as she's going through this house, she's talking about how she never got to know any of her family because most of them died due to a family curse. Uh, quotations. Mm. And uh, it's pretty much just her going through the house, finding these stories and finding out how these people met their untimely demise. Oh. And it's a, it's, a, I was surprised. It's a very sweet, very charming game. I kind of thought it was going to sound kind of depressing. I was going to say it like... is a bit. There's a scene where it's probably my favorite part of the game. If you don't want the game spoiled and you're going to play it, uh, you might want to not listen to this part. But there's a bit where there's a baby in the bathtub and you learn that story. And when I started playing it, it was just, you're playing as a baby in the bath, right? And you're like playing with a frog and then the frog starts playing by itself and you control the frog jumping about. (laughs) And then, like, the mum's trying to get the baby out of the bath but Mm. then she gets called away and then it just, this music starts playing and it's like, oh, this is fun. This is awesome. This is amazing. Mm. And then the mum pulls the plug in the bath and then gets called away to do something else. And then the frog act puts the water back on, which turns the water on in the bath, and of course no one's there to turn the water off as it's rising. Oh, 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 okay. Oh. But then the baby, through the baby's eyes, he turns into a frog swimming about under a pond and then goes down the plug drain, and that's the end of that segment. And it's a really bittersweet, moment because throughout the whole thing you can hear his dad narrating uh how he's talking about this son his son and then um at the end he says i'm sure he was happy and again very bittersweet i thought it was beautiful jesus I, I'm tissues, dude. I'm, no. you're not crying are you i'm on the verge you're such i'm you're on crying. the verge you cry over anything you cried in logan i'm an emotional man leave me alone <laughs> I don't believe for crying and Logan. That's actually really sad. Yeah. Did I you, mean that that I mean You didn't even cry. I think we were like watching the movie. I'm like openly weeping over that scene and you're just sort dude, of like that scene, I genuinely got upset when that girl did not get her Pringles. <laughs> I was so upset. I was just looking and I was thinking, if I was in that situation, I would weep. Yeah, I looked over, I think there was like like you just like had tissues and everything, I looked over and you're just sort of like I was like <laughs> But, um, yeah, so the game, it's by, do you remember Unfinished Swan? Oh, is it the same guys? It's by those people. Nice. And uh, they have a really cool reference, not even a reference, they have a connection to the Unfinished Swan. <laughs> if you remember correctly, which I know you do because you love your video games. <laughs> uh, the Unfinished Swan is about a boy that goes into a land that's run by a king who's a painter. Yeah, and you have like Michael Palin or something like voicing him, like someone from Monty Python. Yeah, yeah. Well, they reveal that one of the kids who didn't actually die, he only went missing, mm-hmm. has he, I mean, he's, he kind of is that king, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. But he went missing as a boy and they never found him. Uh-huh. And then. Like, and his whole room is like white with these paintings from Unfinished Swan and they have straight up they have the music from the Unfinished Swan just wow. straight up playing cool 
So, and I just thought it, that was a really nice It reference. must be like some sort of like weird universe thing. It's either a universe thing or a fun little throwback. We'll know mm. when they release the next game in the next 10 years or something. Yeah, it could be like their own f- version of a Cornetto trilogy. Maybe. Even, or even like a weird Tarrant, you know, like coincident universe thing. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that it was a wonderful game. Cool. Uh, I had fun. I'm probably going to go back, go back and play it again because there's some stories that I didn't even get to see. Cool. So, um, anyway, yeah. Mm. I've also bought a bunch of other games. I bought Darksiders 2 for PlayStation 4. Oh. I bought Akaba's Beats. Uh, the Get Even, which is like a horror, trippy sort of... I like the name. Get Even. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm liking it. It's a, oh. it's a first-person shooter. Uh, but... What's the plot? You've got to get even with some people? No, no. It's really difficult to exp- like, like, to grasp it. You're a guy called Mr. Black who uh, gets thrown into this big asylum place with a goggles thrown on him and this guy's doing an experiment on him to help him get better. And it's pretty much going through his memories. Oh. It's like, it's like okay, I get you. So it's kind of like, uh, like Inception mm-hmm. and it- Saw... And what's that movie where Jake Gyllenhaal's on the train? Uh, Source Code. It's kind of like those movies. Oh, that's kind of, that sounds quite unique. Mm. Maybe throw a bit of uh, David Lynch in there, it will become like really weird. I wouldn't say David Lynch, because David Lynch is on another level of weird. Yeah. Speaking of David Lynch, you've been watching the new Twin Peaks. The elves are not what they seem. Yeah, uh, you've been watching the new Twin Peaks. Yeah. Uh, but of course, before that, you watched the Twin Peaks two seasons and movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, what did you think of those? Uh, Twin Peaks is now like my favorite TV show. Now one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Breaking Bad's still the king. In is my that opinion. is that the new one or the old one? Um, the old one. Mm-hmm. Like the old one is like really good. If it's particularly the first season, it was really, really good. It's got the right amount of like. Um, <coughs> um, <coughs> Sorry. It's got the right amount of like David Lynch um, bizarreness, where he has like his weird like uh, moments from there, and the right biz- and the right amount of bizarre character moments. <coughs> It's really, really good. Like, there's a lot of, like, there's a, like, a great emotional core to the story in that, and, like, Dale Cooper is pretty much my spirit animal. Yeah. I just want to say, you showed me a scene, and it's probably one of my most favourite things I've watched, <laughs> where it's David Lynch, um, I'm assuming he plays a deaf guy. Yeah, he plays Gordon Cole, who's, like, I think, hard of hearing. Right. And he's shouting, like, I'm gonna get something from the bar, like, walks over, and then he's talking to this woman, and it's really sweet. I loved it. He's, like... When I'm talking to everyone else, I have to shout, but I can hear you perfectly. Mm-hmm. You're beautiful. There's a lot of moments like that. And then, and then, and then this old woman turns around and goes... Like, the log lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did she say? She like, she, do, you, do you want some pie or yeah, something? Yeah. And he goes, what? Something about pie? What's she saying? And then she says it and he's like, you are beautiful. And it's like, oh man, this is lovely. And then he goes, uh, what is it? Yeah. I'd, I'd like some pie and a glass of water. My socks yeah. are on fire. I think, she, I think she said, you want some pie? And she's like, yes, sweetheart. And a large quantity of water. My socks are on fire. I love that show so much. Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, unfortunately, that was part of the second season. I mean, the second season was great, but there was a point where they reveal who the killer was way too early. Mm. And it's you can tell it's Dave sort of struggling what struggling on what to talk about and what to do. Yeah. I mean, it's still entertaining and still quite fascinating to watch but it just sort of like there's a point where you're like yeah I kind of want this to end now and it does end on one hell of a cliffhanger and then we get to the um, the movie is okay I mean I, I don't want to like too much, waste too much time on the movie it's okay. alright the third one though the new, the new season I am loving it so far yeah I've heard, I've heard, I've heard some good things and some not good I, things it's a for me as a not only has like someone who's now really getting to the, really getting into the work of David Lynch but as a fan who really loves Twin Peaks now I think it's like David Lynch and the show returning to diamond form. Okay. Like, okay. it's good. But although it's kind of frustrating because like, the, the last episode he played was, like, on last week. And he didn't even have, like, an episode. And he didn't have an episode on the Sunday, like, le- like uh, a couple of days ago. Oh, right. So right, yeah. I was expecting it to be a pop on their TV. And then there was none. And I'm like, wait, what? What made it worse is how the episode pretty much had nothing. Like, you didn't see the other characters. It was, like, a weird montage of complete weirdness. Hmm. Like it starts off in like New Mexico and like a bomb goes off and then it goes from there to a weird like after uh, after uh, life realm of this giant these weird orbs. I'm not gonna lie, that sounds awesome. Yeah. It's it's trust me, it's a really beautiful episode of complete bizarreness and weirdness, like something like that came that came straight out of like David Lynch's head. I recommend right. that one yeah. episode just because of how beautiful and weird it is. Okay. And and then it weird and then it ends. Rush, bro. Yeah, and then it ends on like um, some homeless dude coming and going, gotta like, and then just like, 
Yeah. Oh, trust me, it's terrifying. There's a scene where he comes up to like they go. There's another they're in a turn in the fifties. He goes. He goes up to like this uh, woman in the, sorry, in the um a radio station. And he's like, Carl, and she's like, what? The? And then he like, <laughs> then he, and then he like grabs her by the head, starts Whoa. crushing it. You actually hear the sound effect. Oh. And then her head bursts open, and then he just walk, and then he like uh, walks into the radio station, does the same thing to the host, and then just starts saying something. Everyone goes to sleep. Then there's like this weird big fat cockroach frog thing that. Shoves himself down someone's throat. Oh, and never then, mind. Stop, stop. I don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah, David, yeah, David Lynch is weird. <laughs> never mind. The, uh, so, yeah. Twin Peaks, a new series. Yeah. Good. That and Fargo season 3 is awesome too. Cool. Right. Well, I'm afraid to save it going over, because we were really going to stop it after 45 minutes, but we sorry, got sidetracked with all that stuff we were talking about. Such great subject matters, such as musicals. Uh, television games suicidal clowns suicidal clowns yes uh, that's it from me and Sean this has been uh, Radio City Conversations young people talking about what they want to talk about yes uh, hopefully we can do more of these I hope yeah me too this has been fun and hopefully yeah. we can get a third person because I definitely feel like this would be mm-hmm. a lot more dynamic with a third person mm-hmm. but uh who knows? This has been fun as well. Yeah, yeah. Just the like, one-on-one. Yeah, I mean, especially after hosting like, radio shows by yourself, it gets a bit like boring and daunting, especially when you go rambling on. So it's cool that they have some like you know <laughs> someone to bounce off of. Yeah, like trust me, I get annoyed. At, I get annoyed hearing myself while doing it. Like while I'm talking, I'm like, this is getting stupid. I'm getting. Annoyed. All right. Well, that's it from me and Sean. Sean, I could say say you want to outro oh, or something. Yeah. Um, rub a dub dub. Get shifty. Thank you for listening. You're cool. Perfect. Is that how you end your own radio shows? I don't think that anyone would get it if I said get shifty. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Have a good one.